Hey, what's up guys? Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center again today. And we're going to talk about an issue that doesn't happen all that often, but can happen before you realize it. Now, before we get into that, right down there in that corner, right down there is our subscriber button. Make sure you hit that. We appreciate you doing so. For those that already have, we appreciate you following along week after week after week. If you're on your cell phone, widen that up to the full screen and you'll see that subscriber watermark right down there. This All right. right here is going to be talking about hemipenal infections, okay? Now, let's start with something here. Now, I'm going to bring this little spider. Most of you guys probably seen the episode that Sebastian did not long ago with this little spider ball python, okay? Now, we're going to bring it up right here, okay? Right there. Let's see if I can get this up here a little bit, a little bit closer. And there's the bolt. See the hemipenes? Okay. Now, you see how, see how I did that? First off, that's another way of how to sex the, uh, the ball pythons, especially. You can do a lot of snakes like this. But the hemipenes right there, okay? So this is a hemipene. Now, let's talk about this. We have the cloaca opening right here. This is where they have bowel movements from. Uh, the, the hemipenes are stored down in the tail. Those are called the, uh, uh, the subcaudal scales. Uh, these would be the subcaudal scales from the vent up, uh, also known as the vent. The cloaca opening is known as the ventral scales. These are the subcaudal scales, okay? Now, from right here, when animals mate, as you're going to see right up here in this corner, right here, when snakes are mating, he exerts or protrudes his hemipenes out to insert them into the female's cloaca opening. All right, now, also when these guys have bowel movements or they urinate, they can end up pushing a portion of their hemipenes out or the cloaca opening out as well. When we talk about hemipenal infections, hemipenal infections can happen most of the time from bacteria that gets attached to the hemipenes which of course would be the snake's two penises. And he drags or inserts the hemipenes back into his tail with the bacteria or whatever still attached. So let's use this for an example. One of the things that we, that we encourage, and we even do it ourselves some from time to time, when it comes time for breeding season for whatever the snake is, a lot of the times we'll take the animals completely off of bedding, no bedding at all of any form if they had bedding to begin with. Maybe it was paper towels, maybe it was towels, maybe it was nothing at all, and it's just, it's just the PVC tank. And of course, when a bowel movement happens, you just dry it down, you keep everything completely dry. That's fine as well, depending on each application. But let's say you do use bedding of whatever form, aspen, reptile bark, uh, mulch, like cypress mulch, not, not cedar mulch. Um, even the pine bedding can be kind of a little iffy, but it, it is still okay. Um, cedar you definitely don't want to use anything that has a lot of the the heavy resin that's still in there uh, or the sap but anyways you use any of these forms of bedding right and when these guys mate they do this right here as you're seeing in the video right here when they're mating there is fluids there is um, all different types of fluids that would be on the hemipenes if they don't retract their hemipenes directly into the tail, as soon as they're done mating, urinating, whatever, then what can happen is bedding can get stuck to the two hemipenes. They draw it in and bedding can go into the hemipenal cavity. Okay. When that happens, if you don't know about it and there's no way for them to clear it out and it stays in there, then it can start to build up infection. Okay. At the cloaca opening, what you'll notice, the cloaca opening to the tail, you'll notice it's starting to swell, okay? Once it gets swollen, then it's pretty infected. There's been several times where we've seen this and it's been swollen and you can take in like semi push, kind of like with popping and you can actually push some of the infection out. It's a great way of being able to push some of the infection out, but you have to be very, very careful about that because you can damage the animal depending on how bad the infection is. If you're not familiar with what you're doing, don't do it at all, okay? This is not going to be one of those that I'm trying to walk you step by step through dealing with it because if you're not familiar with the process, then you shouldn't do it in any form or fashion. This is just looking out for and being aware of something that can happen. Generally speaking, nine times out of ten, when a hemipenal infection happens, it's because while his hemipenes 
were ejected out of his body, were basically outside the body. They were wet, moist, for some reason or another. It grabbed a hold of bacteria, materials, bedding, things like that, drew it back into the hemipenal cavity in the tail, and it stayed there and built up bacterial infection. That can become very dangerous. One of the things that can happen here, of course, is it can damage the hemipenes bad enough to where he's not able to produce anymore, where you cannot produce or mate the snake anymore. Another one, of course, can be bacterial infection that gets so bad that leads to sepsis, which either the infection or the sepsis can kill the snake. You have other things that can happen, like it rotting the tail away, which may not necessarily always kill the snake, but it can create nasty necrotic areas with inside of the tail. Simple treatment for things like this would be betadine peroxide, antibiotic ointment, things like that. As long as it's not a bad infection, you very, very easily, very simply can do a betadine or a peroxide and an antibiotic ointment treatment on there several times a day and even inside because you can take a q-tip a small q-tip and you can especially if it's a big enough snake small one don't do it but if it was a big enough snake you could take and run that in there so that it so that it helps lubricate and also get the antibiotic ointment inside of there to help with fighting the infection but the whole point of this this video right here is to talk about something that not many people have ever seen before but it does happen, especially in breeding situations. Every now and then it'll happen in just a captive pet situation. But the reasons why is because when they're having bowel movements, urinating, whatever, when they're mating, the hemipenes are stuck out and they get bacterial materials and other such debris on the tail, whether big or small. And when they retract their hemipenes, again, back into the hemipenal cavity, you have there in turn a foreign body matter that leads to a bacterial infection okay now i hope this has been helpful for you gives you some insight on in some things now we're not going to tell you to use bedding not to use bedding you do what you want to do you do what has worked for you but if you do use bedding and you're using bedding in a breeding situation this is definitely something that you need to be aware of and you need to keep a watch out for because especially mating snakes when it's in a captive setting like that and they're on bedding all the time that can happen from time to time but like i said don't don't think this is one thing that happens all the time it doesn't very few breeders realistically ever deal with any kind of actual hemipenal infections the only other way a hemipenal infection can happen is damage to the hemipenes themselves somehow the hemipene got damaged maybe during mating uh, he didn't release the female fast enough. It got a tear. It got a scrape, scratch, cut. Uh, there are several ways in which a hemipenal infection can happen. But generally speaking, it comes from foreign body matter, usually from bedding and things like that, that don't get cleared off of the hemipenes before being reinserted back into the tail. Now, this is Chad. We are the Reptile Rangers. Here at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center, we appreciate you guys following along week after week after week. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell for notifications. Make sure to leave comments. We appreciate folks doing that. Make sure to write us in and let us know of other things that you want us to film about. We're trying to keep caught up as, as much as we can with videos that people want us to get caught up on. Now again, we appreciate you following along week after week, video after video. We'll either see you here at the zoo or we'll see you on the next episode. Later.